But welcome to the English Angle. I'm Alex English. I'm here with Jaria out having a conversation about Times Two Media, a company that you've started and yeah. you've been putting forward. You, you got the, the merch. You got the Air's merch. coming in too. All yeah. right, hey, let me know. Let me yeah, know. Cause I'm ready to rep. I'm All ready right, to rep. I sure. work with the sports ministry here, uh, athletes in action. But here I work at UGA's campus with it is. So we have FCA and Athletes in Action combined. So it's called Team United. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of like the team chaplain for women's soccer and women's swimming, kind of like the main point of spiritual resources for them. But also work with like all the other uh, sports teams here. Um, just kind of leading them, discipling them, uh, being a spiritual resource, like I said. Um, and then the other job is I work for Georgia Bulldogs Sports Marketing. Gotcha. And that's where I do my video stuff and I work with all the sports here again. Um, so they kind of overlap. And into specifically uh, the company that you've started and put together in Times 2 Media, what has that experience been like so far? What gave you the idea for that name? And just what can you tell me about uh, the program that you've put together? Yeah, I really, I guess I should have my sister on here too, because that's where it kind of started. Um, as you know, it's Times 2 Media. So there's two of us, me and my sister who created it. Um, and then our favorite number is two. Okay. And so like, that's kind of, that kind of was our identity kind of for growing up is like, oh, there goes number two. And I've worn, worn number two all my life. She wore number two all her life. So um, pretty much that's where it kind of came from. And then we started off just doing video and photography. So again, two things and just that number, this is the power in two. Yeah. And so. Yeah, it takes two to make a thing go right, as, yeah, the, for as sure. the boomers say. Um, <laughs> but so what have been some of the highlights and challenges of your coverage, uh, either with that or with sports marketing? What, what have been some of those experiences like? Um, some of the highlights is just See, be able to, being able to create memories for uh, clients or people that maybe aren't specifically clients, but people that we can just go and capture. That's another thing that uh, kind of motivated us to start this uh, business is we like looking back on our videos and seeing how they make us smile. And we also love when people took pictures of us and we knew how that made us feel. And that's kind of what we want to do with our company. Um, and so right now we're just doing stuff for free when it comes to like sport pictures and stuff like that. We want to be able to create that same atmosphere that we had growing up in the environment of seeing yourself on social media and we just believe that there's it's just power in that um and so i think that's just been a highlight is is doing that and also um just seeing the growth and learning learning uh for myself and just learning more together with my sister as well um which i think that's another challenge is that uh we really we really weren't taught anything. I think the job that I have right now with sports marketing has taught me so much. Okay. Um, but like, we've been kind of, this is ground up. I've had a camera in my hand ever since I had a ball in my hand and nobody ever taught me anything. It's just been kind of built off passion. So just, uh, we don't really have any of the really fundamentals. We kind of just learn as we're going. And we really don't know what the heck we're doing. We just. But that's, I mean, that's kind of how it goes. You're selling yeah. yourself short, but when I, when I first came across your page, before I even knew you like personally and we got those runs in for 80-20, um, it showed me that you can always be doing something. And that that's to me is the epitome of what this field is because I think even, even for myself, like yes, I went to school to do this. Yes, I always wanted to do journalism, get in front of a camera, talk, you know, now podcasting is the way of everybody tries yeah, to do something. Sure. But I think that as long as you're consistent in the content and not just trying to put something out there, uh, I think that that's, that's the biggest thing you can be doing. And that, yeah. with a lot of younger media people or even seasoned ones, they get so caught up in, oh, well, I did it this way, or oh, you know, I don't have this, so I'm not even gonna post. Look, if you've got the time to make for somebody else and you can give them a, a snippet of what their life looks like to the outside and in their highs and lows, that's gonna propel them to keep going forward. And I mean that. Yeah. Or alternatively, you're gonna, you're gonna get somebody slipping, it's gonna be a meme for life, <laughs> you know? And, and that's that's that's, uh, that's also a memory. Um, I say all that, every now and again, I do see you get a couple of runs in on the court, um, <laughs> you know, in a non-team setting and just playing pickup, what's that mentality been like for you in comparison to say like three or four years ago? That's a great question. That is, that's a great question. Um, my mentality has definitely changed um, from the obvious of like, I don't have a coach and I can do what I want, but also um, I wasn't playing for the right reasons when I was in college. I didn't, I, I believe in God, but I didn't know him like I know him now. Like he's my friend, my father. And it, and knowing that 
um, that I that he's my father and I have the greatest father ever. It's just freedom in that. And so knowing that I'm already there's like you know there's many verses, but it talks about like it's already written. Like you're you're basically already taken care of having the best father. Um, and that's just kind of kind of mentality that I play with on the court, and it brings so much freedom. Like I can do whatever I want. Not only it just adds that I don't have a coach, but also that. I had like I'm on the greatest team no matter what. Yeah. And um, it's just really cool. It's just I wish I would have had that when I was playing in college. I wish I would have had that mentality of knowing that I already won, and that being a child of God is is being like on the greatest team. So that's definitely my mentality now. I mean, you were recently baptized here in Athens, renewing your faith and continue to walk with the Lord. What has been your advice to those that are currently athletes at any level? who continue to try to make time for their spirituality in a way that isn't taboo, so to speak? Yeah, I would say it's hard. It's definitely hard to be a, a Christian athlete, um, a Christ follower, um, and play and play a sport. And because sports, it's time consuming already. But I will say that the time is worth it. Um, and it's something that I'm still trying to work on too. Like I still have a busy schedule, but I know that if I make time for him, there's just gonna be things in my life that I'm not even doing and it's, it's just, there's just goodness coming out of it. Um, and I, I think the more I, I allow God to come in, the more he can do. Um, and that's whatever, that's playing a sport or just being a regular person. Um, so my advice to anybody who would, who's a Christ follower and who's an athlete is to make the time for it because it's worth it. It's hard, but it's gonna be the best decision that you ever make and I think ex accepting Jesus was the best decision that I ever made in my life. Well, so obviously you haven't been here super long in Athens, Georgia, but can you tell me a little bit about your experience in comparison to Florida and South Carolina and being here now still in the sports venue but not necessarily of the sports venue if you get what I'm saying. Uh, but um, the palm trees, all of that. <laughs> um, no, nah, seriously, I would say just the culture. Um, Definitely Florida. I have, I obviously have my family there. Right. Um, but being away, being in Georgia, being in South Carolina, it's been like a home away from home. Yeah. And um, it's been cool to be able to be comfortable here. Um, definitely a lot of different, different challenges. It's not like the comfort, the comfortable, the comfortability that I have at home. Yeah. Also, just the people here in Athens definitely yeah. been great. People in Greenville have definitely been great. Um, and that's what else just made me feel like a home away from home. Um, but besides for that, I still like it's just different cultures, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously I'm no spring chicken anymore. I, I was born and raised in Germany. I moved to Athens when I was 18 and I was just around the university setting. And so where I'm at now in my life is like, I explore Georgia. Like it, it, there's so many counties I, I'm trying to get acclimated with not just, you know, okay, I know this place, but these are people I can confide in. These are people I can trust. Working with Athens Academy, that's been a blessing in itself. And just doing what I can to pay it forward for yeah, the younger for sure. generation, which sounds crazy for me to say that out loud. Um, but it, it, it really is, it is what you make it. So you're in a college environment, uh, make the most of it, but also don't forget the people that really, really strike a chord in your heart because that, that's what everything we do in life comes back to, it's people. So yeah, um, I, I say all that. What can you tell me about uh, your experience with 8020 and Coach Paul? Obviously, Steph Stephanie Paul has gone overseas. Um, How has that absence affected your overall approach and just, yeah, just, just making the most of this opportunity? And... I, um, Steph, that's my girl. Um, she's a big reason why I'm here at Georgia. Um, so, I mean, I can't even, like, I, I salute her for going out there and her absence is definitely, I would say it's definitely hit me, but I'm so grateful for her to have the opportunity to bring me here. Um, like we were AAU teammates, kind of a little bit about us. We were AAU teammates, didn't really talk much. Um, and then I just kind of, I started coming up here on the weekends. I often tell people like, I was going, I went to Furman on the weekdays, but on the weekends yeah, I was yeah. a UGA student. Like, That's real. That's um, real. <laughs> And she, and Steph, you know, we weren't really, we never really close, but those weekends brought us closer together and just being here, um, that's why I really felt like, I was like, dang, I love this place. Um, not only by the parties, because I was turning up, I mean, but, happens, you know, yeah, yeah, 
and it's crazy because those weekends turned to me living here now um, and working with 8020 to partner with her with that. And she also brought me on board with Athletes in Action. Um, and then also, I just had connections where I could work with Georgia Bulldog Sports Marketing. So like I said, she just opened the door for me in so many ways. Um, and so I'm so grateful for our friendship and just the fact that we're like, like-minded is so cool. Um, and it's definitely, she's definitely one of a big part of my spiritual community as well. So, um, just not having that has been pretty hard. Um, but I, I still text her, check on her and stuff like that. So it's good that we still can be in contact, just virtual. Um, but definitely miss the game nights and just hanging out with her and hooping with her. Um, yeah, game nights were game. I I didn't go to too many, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uno, yeah. Uno, uh, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uno, Uno <laughs> out, Uno out. Yeah, you you had you had a lot of stacked cars over there, man. Yeah, no, that's alright. We almost broke a glass table, but it is what it is. I've let it go. I'm learning to be a better person, less competitive, more of a yeah, happy go lucky guy, so to speak. For sure. I'm storing with eighty twenty. I'll be. I think I'll be training on Monday. So okay. Question is, are you, are you gonna come through still? I, I will say. Anytime you need me, for literally sure, just sure. let me know. I mean, I, what I do, I call it freelance and I try to monetize where I can, but just trying to make content and also make a better moment for others that I already know, mm -hmm. I, I gotta do that wherever yeah, I can. For sure. So I say that with platform comes privilege. Uh, do you have any future projects or events coming up that you wanna make sure to mention? I do have a big project from my class that's a future story, but it also, basically produced by Times to Media because that's me. Right. Um, so that will be um, on our YouTube channel or on Instagram. Um, it's it's a it's a feature story on black women uh, athletes here at UGA. Um, kind of it's called in the league of their own. Kind of just highlighting how as black women we're we're, we're two um, minorities simultaneously at once. Minority identities at once. We're black. We're female. On top of that, we're athletes. So um, like with that, that comes a lot of uh, challenges, but it also just makes our success a lot more um, rewarding. And, and it's, it's just cool to see. So um, also, my end of the, I do an end of the year video for my family every every year. I never really post so. it, um, but I think I'm gonna post the one from last year because it low key went crazy. And I think I'm gonna post the one from this year as well. So end of the year, so. that'll be out too. Definitely a lot of laughs, a lot of, a lot of emotions. Um, so yeah. I think I think those are my next couple projects going on, and it just stay stay locked in times to media. I guess we got content posting up there. Talking about intersectionality uh, and, and just in sports and for Black women in this country, uh, I obviously don't know what I don't know. Yeah. biracial cis male whatever the title is I'm not great with that I'm not great with the lingo but I've always said give voice to the voiceless and what you do I've seen a snippet of it I think you're doing a yeah. great job before we wrap I want to make sure I want to make sure I, I don't I know, have your jacket man yeah, yeah exactly I knew you were gonna forget no but, you never told me hold on hold on no no let's, no let's, I'm let's, putting let's, you on the spot you I'm never put, said though you were gonna look, give, you never said though bring your jacket so we can switch no today. no you had a busy day don't worry about see what, what people don't know about me, especially last year, I used to carry so many just knickknacks with me to show I know sports. Now, LeBron James, I'm a LeBronless Laker. I'm, I was not a Heatle. I was never a Heat fan. And I was not a LeBron Ooh, fan with the Heat. Tomato, tomato. But, but working with you all kind of reinvigorated my passion for uh, the moment that I fell in love with sports. And that was the 2012 Olympics. And I just remember the Redeem team. I wasn't a Kobe fan. I was never a Kobe fan, but my respect for that team and what they did coming together, um, it, I can't articulate what that means. Yeah, for sure. And I gave you a, I gave you a jacket to make you really feel to be a part of this UGA campus, but I'm gonna need it when I get back. Now, I'm gonna I'm a need the jacket when I get back. You reinvigorated my passion for what I do, and. Yeah, you, you're, you're up there. It. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, man. This is cool. This is real fun. Yeah. I, I'm always the one interviewing. so. It and it, it, it does help a lot just to yeah. like hear it from a different perspective. So sure. I say all that. Thank you so much. Uh, and as always, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Make good choices. It's a little gray area, but I know you're going to do the right Great. You got an all gray. Hey. No, I... <laughs> <Me slapper. laughs> So is that what y'all think my humor is? No, is that, I, you I, think that's, that's the jokes I make on my channel? <laughs> look, look, 
My jokes are funny, family friendly for the most part, maybe a little bit of jokes about my love life, self-deprecation, but boy oh boy, we've got top tier quality.